I thought that's my duty. I do my duty. That's enough. When some people ask me to come to see them, and then I come, and I give them financial and spiritual support, and then the fifty-one people will flow back home, and then the whole world make noise. Many international organizations protested that the refugees should not be sent back. That's how I knew. Okay, so I said, okay, everybody did it, so I don't need to do it. There's organization about refugee. There are United Nations, Amnesty International, and all the charitable group. They already did it, so it's okay. But now, at this moment, nobody say anything. When it is supposed that many or most will be sent back home from a repatriation program, and nobody said anything, and they were so desperate. I heard they go on hunger strike, and then finally it didn't succeed, and they killed themselves. And then many people wrote to me and <laughs> cried for help. Do you think I, as such a spiritual person, should have no compassion, should have no humanitarian feeling? How can I refuse them? So I just had to do it. I know I'm busy, too busy already, without doing this. But they said, no one else does it now. The whole world silent. Only 51 person, and they make a lot of noise and protest. And now all of us are going to send back, and nobody said anything. So they were so desperate and very hopeless. And as they suffer so much, what can I do? What can you do in my situation? I try to avoid, because I want to rise above frontiers and nationalities in order to work better. But I'm just caught into, trapped into it. Not that I feel burden to do it. I'm willing to do it. That's why I came into. But not that I look for it or search for more burden or more trouble, because to take care of spiritual aspect and take care of many thousands of disciples is enough work. Yes, I understand your concern about my extra burden, but uh, it will not frighten me. If I can help people to save their lives, and dignity, I am willing to do it. Sometimes they also need not only food, money, job, but they need also a kind of a mental support. Yes, someone who hold their hand and stand by. <laughs> so we will do that too. That's why. <laughs> I wish the world has been a better place for everyone. Each nation prospers in her own way. Each one has enough necessity so that we don't need to do this job. But you see, it's just like the United Nations. It has to do what it has to do. <laughs> That's why the United Nations is there. <laughs> uh, you have enough burden, but you still have to do it. After the African refugees in Afghanistan and then El Salvador, Niagara, and what not. You see, I have to take care of the spiritual issue at the same time. So I go here and there. I'm on tour now. I have seven more places to go for lecture. Not that I finish, I forsake this. It's more important. It's just like you want to go home and you drive your car. That's your, your duty. But should there be some stones on the road, then you have to go out and remove the stones first or some holes in the road. We have to fill it up and then drive home again. We cannot say, it's not my business. I drive the other side, leave the stones there. <laughs> I'm just curious, um, with this situation that you have described, uh, today I was at an NGO conference. The subject was the women, mm. the world over. Mm. And one of the speakers talked about Part of that refugee problem is the high number of women with children, without husbands, that creates a problem in terms of politicians who, who don't consider women very important. And so I'm, I'm thinking of the woman who spoke about it, who had that knowledge, and then the possibility of your linking to her and to people who are knowledgeable. 
they forget that without woman, how can they come out into the world? Any politicians. Hmm? <laughs> without children, how can they grow up? Without children who take care of our later generation, who later take care of our country. <laughs> Everyone has different job. The family members have their family jobs. It's no necessary to oppose each other. If everybody is monk, how can we have this world? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has different job, that's all. Hmm? So anyone oppose woman, they are mistaken. Woman is mother of all nations, all the Buddhas. Woman's even mother of Jesus. So they forgot that. Yeah. How can anyone look down on woman, I wonder? Hmm? It's a misconception. In your book, I was reading uh, yesterday, yes. uh, you refer a lot to Quang Ying method. Yes. And I'm curious about that because I really didn't, I didn't get what it was or, yes. I mean, you just referred to it. I didn't yes. really get that far in the book. Yes. Okay. That's nice that you ask. Yesterday, I also mentioned briefly about enlightenment, you see, when I was in the United Nations. We use the Quang Ying method to quicken our enlightenment, to offer us a chance to be enlightened immediately. That's what Quan Yin method is. Quan means observation, Yin means the word or the, the vibration. You know the word in the Bible. What do you think the word means in the Bible? The word. The sound. The sound. That's it. The vibration, yes. So, the Quan Yin means we contact with the Word, yes, and observe it every day, I mean contact it every day, so that we know what the Word is. And the Word will teach us without language what we have to do every day. Human teach human in a human language. Animals teach animals in animal's language. God teach God in God's language. So the God within us will receive the instruction from God Self. Just like a part receives instruction from the whole and knows that He is a temple of God. And then the Holy Spirit is within Him. So the Word will teach us, the God within us, to be awakened, <laughs> to recognize our greatness, our wisdom, our multi abilities, and then we know how to use it every day. And we just do things spontaneously, naturally, without even thinking why we do it, but it's just right. And the more we contact with that word, the less burden we feel, even though we do a lot of work, but we do not feel as tired as before. And we do not feel so heavy and so caught up in the work like before. We do it as a witness. Therefore, we are more intelligent. You know, when we think too much in the work, we are engulfed by it. But when we do it from outside, like a witness, we can manage better. So the Quan Yin means observation of the word, the sound, which is inside us. But without initiation, we do not know that it exists, because we don't know where to find it, or how to concentrate in order to get in touch with it. So the initiation means the opening of our inner knowledge, inner wisdom, and then we have to use it every day in order to progress, in order to know how great we are, until we truly know, like Jesus knew. Yeah? And we can say, I and my Father are one. Yes. Jesus knew it because he practiced this. All the Bible always mention about the sound. Just like when Moses, I have seen God the first time on Mount Sinai, he say, His voice like thunder, he appear like a flame. Flame means light, so bright, like a flame. In the old days, they don't have so sophisticated language like we do now. So they say, like a flame, like thunder, like the sound of many water. That is the sound of God. So. At the time of initiation, or after initiation, you will hear this sound of many water, or the sound of thunder, sound of God, and see the flame, or see 
the light that descends from heaven like the dove and be enlightened and know that we are God, we have God within us. Know that we and